Hi, welcome to class. My name is Don LaFont, Professor Don, and this week in Cisco 2, we are covering Module 16, Troubleshooting Static and Default Routes. This is our last module in Cisco 2. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If you are watching this presentation inside of our uh, Cisco classroom as a recording, please ask your questions in the help forums. If you're watching it out on YouTube, please ask your questions down below in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer those questions, but feel free to answer each other. And if you're watching this live with me, hold on a few minutes and you get an opportunity to ask questions once I'm done. This presentation should only be about 15 minutes long, not too long uh, and not too complex. Let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> We are going to troubleshoot static and default routes. We'll explain how a router processes packets when a static route is configured, and we'll troubleshoot static and default route configuration issues. So packet processing, how does a router packet, uh, how does a router process packets? Well, PC1 addresses, let me turn on my laser pointer. PC1, uh, pro, uh, um, addresses a packet to PC3 and sends it to its default gateway address, R1. When the packet arrives on R1's G00 interface, R1 decapsulates the packet and switches the routing table for a matching destination network entry. There are three options. If it matches a static routing entry, R1 will use the static route to identify the next hop IP or exit interface or both and it will send the packet along its way. If it does not match a specific route to the destination network, then R1 will use the default static route if one has been configured. If it doesn't match any of the routing table entries and there's no default static route, R1 will just drop the packet and then reply with an ICMP message back to the source. That's R1. Now, assuming R1 matches a routing table entry, it encapsulates the packet in a new frame and forwards it out interface S010 towards R2. R2 receives the packet on its S010 interface. It decapsulates and processes the packet the same way R1 does. When R2 finds a match in the routing table, it uses the identified next hop IP address or exit interface and sends the packet out of its interface S011 towards R3. It leaves here and it heads this way. When R3 receives the packet, it decapsulates it and searches the routing, in, the routing table for a match. The destination IP address of PC matches a directly connected G00 interface. Therefore, R3 searches the ARP table for, a MAC, for the layer 2 MAC address of PC3. If no ARP entry exists, then S1 sends an ARP request out G000 interface. PC3 replies with its uh, to the MAC, uh, um, the MAC, um, uh, the ARP request, and it replies with its MAC address. R3 encapsulates the packet in a new frame and then uses the PC3 MAC address as the destination MAC address and the G00 MAC address as the source MAC address. So its uh, destination MAC address is PC3, source is R3, and it sends the message to PC3. Now, what happens when something goes wrong? Well, networks fail for a number of reasons. An interface can fail. A server can provide, provider can drop the connection. Links can become oversaturated. Or an administrator may enter a wrong configuration. Network administrators are responsible for pinpointing and solving these problems. To efficiently find and solve these issues, it's advantageous to be intimately familiar with the tools to help isolate routing problems quickly. The tools it recommends includes ping, which can verify layer 3 connectivity to the destination. You can even use extended pings when you have uh, errors that are intermittent, pinging something perhaps 100 times. Traceroute will verify path the path to the destination network, replying with intermediate stops that what uses ICMP to do that. Uh, it, you can use show IP route to display the routing table. 
It's used to verify routing entries for destination IP addresses, specific, specifically the static addresses that you've entered, uh, more so than the ones that were automatically configured. Uh, you can use show IP interface brief to display the status of, status of device interfaces to see if they're up or down. You can also verify the operational static and the IP addresses on, that have been configured on the interface to see if anybody's made an error. You can show CDP neighbors to display a list of directly connected devices and the information for each of those ports will also be shown. Uh, and then you can maybe compare CDP results of the actual devices to show IP interface brief to what's been configured and maybe see some configuration issues. We're gonna give you one troubleshooting option uh, example. So here we have uh, a uh, standard network and that standard network uh, or a, I should say a network uh, has PC1 sending a message to PC3. Uh, it has to travel through R1, R2 and R3 to get to PC3, just like we defined or just a moment ago. Now it fails. So let's take a look at the IP uh, v4 routing table. So we do a show IP route, we jump down to the gateway, and we can see here uh, that we have two directly connected networks and uh, IP addresses are linked, and then we've entered a static address. Now I want you to note that we're on R2. We are on R2 right now. Um, and uh, we also have uh, a third directly connected network. We have 172.0.0 that is um, one six, I'm sorry, one six zero uh, dot zero. Uh, that is, uh, I'm looking for that network. Um, I'm sorry, here it is. That's just the summary parent route. I'm not sure why I read that, but I did. Uh, here we have the network, the one network connected uh, to one th um, uh, 32. So that's that um, port right there uh, going to 172. Dot um, one actually, one seven two. That's this one. That's that port right there. Uh, we have uh, directly connected sixteen dot two. That's that port right there. And we have uh, directly connected. Where's the third one? One nine two one six eight. Uh, that's that port right there. Okay. And um, we have a static route going to one seven two sixteen three network here. The one seven two sixteen three network. Uh, and the static route is um, via 192.168. Oh, wait, that's over here. Why would we have a directly connected static route going to uh, the three network, this guy here, if we have an IP address uh, with a static route, this uh, for, for the next hop IP address of over here. Obviously, I've just identified the problem. So the problem is um, we have a bad uh, routing table entry, and all we have to do is solve that by entering the, the correct IP address for the next hop. So to get to the three network, we have to enter IP route uh, to the three network uh, with a, uh, the next hop IP address of 172.16.2.1, then we do a show IP route and you can see now it's get using this uh, exit, um, I mean, this next hop IP address uh, to get to the three network and we have solved our problem. All right, now you're gonna get some practice troubleshooting. You have uh, both a packet tracer and a lab this week for troubleshooting static and default routes. That's it, quick and easy. The last chapter uh, should be that way, I think. Uh, my name is Don LaFon, Professor Don, uh, this week, uh, we covered uh, module 16. That's what that just was just now. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, maybe you do, uh, please ask the questions now or just a moment when I finish this presentation. I'll be happy to answer those questions. You can ask your questions in the help discussion forum if you're in my Netacad class. And you can also ask questions uh, down below in the comment sections of YouTube uh, if you're watching this online. Um, also, I do appreciate uh, your um, your thumbs up if this was a good presentation for you uh, and helped you to understand the concepts. Uh, please uh, rate um, my presentation. 
And you can also add comments down below in the comment section. I appreciate your feedback and please follow. It helps me out and um, you'll be notified automatically when future videos are released. All right, that's it for me. My name is Don LaFon, Professor Don. It's been great having you uh, in Cisco 2 covering all 16 modules. If uh, I can help in any ways, please reach out to me and I'll be happy to do so. Hopefully soon you'll be seeing my Cisco 3 videos. All right, great. Thank you for coming to class.